Dr. Pekos, I saw it yesterday in New York. It was just like that window, that moment between Delta and Omicron. Can you say all clear for a more normal society? The, the one caveat I would say is one needs to look locally at what's happening. There's still a little bit of a difference in certain states in terms of how much Omicron is circulating, but many of the states and cities that saw Omicron enter end of November, beginning of December, are now seeing the end of that surge with, right. with numbers going down. And um, yes, it, so it does look like there is the light at the end of the tunnel coming up really fast. Take the moving average. The Washington Post, among others, using John Hopkins. Hopkins data looks at a seven-day moving average of deaths. I've been waiting, waiting, waiting for that to roll over. I now have two days of a negative first derivative on deaths. That is wonderful news. Is it here? Is it now? Can you say deaths are rolling over? Uh, yes. Again, some differences between states, but overall, that deaths and severe disease, meaning hospitalizations, they're always lagging indicators of case numbers. Those are starting to drop right now, too. So again, look locally to make sure that those trends are as far down as as they should be, but everything is looking like this, this surge is ending, and it's really all about now seeing where we plateau, how far down we can get uh, before we uh, really start to really re uh, relieve ourselves of most of these public uh, health interventions. Andrew, could you update us on where we are on vaccinations as well as boosters? Are we continuing to see a growing share of the population getting vaccinated, or did the Omicron variant sort of stop that in its tracks? Well, you know, one would have thought that those surge of cases of Omicron would have helped stimulate more people to go out and get vaccinated. Those numbers don't look as impressive as I really would have liked them to see. Um, there's a very, very large now and strong uh, database that shows that, you know, vaccination with a booster or a combination of vaccination with infection gives you really, really strong uh, antibody responses. And those antibody responses also recognize many different variants. Omicron infection alone isn't as good as any of those other scenarios. So one of the things I'd really love to be able to see is people who have gotten infected during this Omicron surge realizing that a simple vaccination afterwards could give them a tremendous amount of protection, much more than they see right now uh, with just the Omicron infection. Right. What's the latest on the next variant as well? There's been a lot of rumors of sort of a, a variant of the Omicron variant starting to pop up. What's the latest uh, on the variants as, as we progress through this year? Well, my colleagues here at Johns Hopkins always accuse me of being the bearer of bad news mm -hmm. as we follow all of these variants, of course. So there are variants that are out there. Um, that's expected. Viruses mutate, variants emerge. Nothing seems to be sort of uh, mirroring what this first Omicron, which we call BA1, has done. So there are variants that are out there. Scientists like myself are carefully monitoring sequence data. We're bringing in viruses all the time. After this interview, I'm going upstairs to actually look at some viruses that we've harvested that have some new mutations. But there's nothing on the horizon right now that is as concerning as Omicron. You do, when, you, when you go upstairs, and look at viruses. Do you do it on a Petri dish with agar? I mean, when you actually look at a virus, what do you do? Well, we can't see a virus, but we can see the effects of a virus. So we have dishes of cells, and when we put virus on those cells, usually within 12 to 14 hours, the virus starts to kill those cells, and you can see that coming up. And so we monitor that as our first indirect measure of how viruses are replicating. So what is, this? is this like on a Petri dish where you have a bagel and cream cheese and you accidentally <laughs> drop the cream cheese on the Petri dish and that, and that destroys science? Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's somewhat similar to that. The, it's funny because the virus actually moves in what we call plaques. Mm. So it moves from one cell to a neighbor. So you can see cells initially starting to die, then their neighbors yeah. start to die, and then it moves through the whole culture. So it's a fascinating process. But then again, I'm a virologist.